What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next question. We have to show that the triangle with these vertices, four, zero, negative two, zero, and then one, three, root three, is an equilateral triangle. And then we have to find coordinates of another equilateral triangle. So just as a quick review, an equilateral triangle is a triangle that has all three sides have the same length. And so to show that a triangle is going to be equilateral, we have to find the length of all three sides and just make sure that it's all equal. Now, just as a quick review, or actually as a quick overview, let's draw a diagram. So we got negative two and zero. Let's actually label these points. So we'll have A, B, C. So this here would be point B. And then we got four and zero, which would be like over here. So that would be point A. And then we got one, three root three. Now one is over here and then three root three, that's gonna be like up here, let's say. Yeah, that's another thing that's gonna happen in this question. We're gonna be working with these roots, three root three exact values when we're using the length formula because you may run into a question where a coordinate's gonna be in this kind of format, right? But it's not too bad to, uh, to deal with. Okay, so that's the rough drawing right there. So we gotta show that that triangle is an equilateral triangle. So what we gotta do is we gotta find the length of each side. Now, the length formula just in general is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, right? If you have two coordinates, x1, y1, x2, y2. And so we just have to go through each of these sides. So let's start with side A and B or AB rather. So we have points negative two and zero, and then we got four and zero. So I'm gonna let this be x1, y1. This is gonna be x2, y2. So we would have um, x2 minus negative two, and then that's gonna be squared. And then we're gonna have y2 zero minus zero. This is gonna be pretty easy. It's gonna be squared. So this would end up being four minus negative two is like four plus two, right? That's gonna be squared. This is gonna end up being zero. And so we would end up having six to the power two plus zero to the power two, which is just zero. This would end up being 36, square root of 36 is just six, right? The fact that we had six to the power two and then square rooting, like if you ever have the square root of something squared, well, it's just gonna end up being that something, right? So in this case, it ends up being V six. Right, so the length over here of this side is six units. So that's the length of AB. So let's work now with, uh, let's do BC. And then let me actually just write out these coordinates here. So we got negative two and zero, one, three, root three. Okay, so here you gotta be careful. So we'll have X1, uh, y1, x2, y2. So watch what happens here. So we'll have x2, which would be one, minus x1, which would be negative two, like that, and then that's gonna be squared. And then we'll have y2, which is three root three, minus y1, which is zero, and then that's gonna be squared, like that. So what happens here is we'll have one minus negative two, which is like one plus two, which would end up giving us three. That's uh, gonna be squared. And then over here, three root three minus zero is just three root three. And then that's gonna be squared right there. So this part, it's easy. We know that's just gonna be nine, but what's this gonna be? I'm gonna actually work with it on the side. So we have three root three 
to the power of two. Now, the way you wanna look at this is you wanna look at two things that are multiplying that are in a bracket to the power of something. So just in general, if I have something like AB to the power of X, if two things are multiplying and it's to the power of X, well, what I could do is I could take both things, split them up and take them to that same power, right? If they're multiplying or dividing, that works as well, right? If you have like A over B to the power of X, that's like A to the X over B to the X. So it works with multiplying or dividing. It doesn't work with addition and subtraction. So for example, you can't take something add it up, okay, this here is not a rule, right? These two do not equal, but these two do equal. And notice that what's happening here is it's this format, right? This A is like this three, and then this B is like this root three, and then this X is this two. So we could split it up so we can say, this is gonna be three to the power of two, and then we'll have root three to the power of two. Just make sure you put both of those things in brackets, whatever numbers they are there. And so now we could do these separately. Notice this would end up being what? Three to the power of two is nine. And then root three to the power of two is just three, right? As we mentioned before, if we have root a to the power of two, that's just gonna be a. Another format this could be in is if we have root a squared, that's also gonna be a. Right, both of these are the same thing. Sometimes you'll see this exponent on the outside, like over here, right? Sometimes the exponent will be on the inside, right? And this exponent has to be a two if this is a square root over here, right? For this to be a. So we, uh, for here to here, we just applied this. And so we end up with nine times three, which just gives us 27, right? So this, ends up just being 27, and we did the work on the side right there. So nine plus 27 would give us 36, so we'll have root 36, which would give us six, right? And as expected, that should be six because we're showing that this is an equilateral triangle. Okay, and then finally, we'll uh, work with point AC. Um, or sorry, length AC. So we'll be working with points four and zero, and then one, three, root three. So let's label these. This would be X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So we'll have uh, one minus four. That's gonna be the power two. And then we'll have three root three minus zero, that's gonna to be to the power of two. And so what would end up happening is we would have negative three to the power of two plus three root three to the power of two, which would give us negative three to the power of two is nine, and then three root three to the power of two, as we showed the work before, that's just 27. This, a, uh, this ends up being 36, root 36 ends up being six. So this is six as well, right? So we found all three lengths, all three lengths are equal. Therefore, we show that it's an equilateral triangle. Now, given these coordinates, how can we find the coordinates of another equilateral triangle? Well, since we're given all three, it's actually going to be very easy. We could just shift this left or right, up or down. Um, in a future video, I'm gonna do a tougher question where we have to find an equilateral triangle only given two, um, given two points, and then we have to find the third point in order to make an equilateral triangle. So that process is gonna be different, it's gonna be a tougher question, but if you're given all three points, you can just shift it. So let's maybe, let's maybe take this point and put it here at the origin. So what we would do is we would shift everything by four to the left. And so notice how all the Y values are gonna stay the same, but all the X values are gonna change 
you'd pretty much be subtracting four from all the x values. So if that happens, this four and zero, we're gonna shift it here. So we would just subtract four from the x value, which would give us zero for the new x value. The y value would stay the same. Negative two minus four would give us negative six. Y value would stay the same. And then we'd have one, three root three, one minus four would give us uh, negative three. So negative three would be like here, the y value would stay the same. So we'd have negative three, three root three. So right there is an example of another equilateral triangle or the coordinates of another equilateral triangle.